thank you very much for the invitation to um, share what we're doing here at Newcastle. Um, so I'm just going to talk about um, from data to discovery uh, in terms of our research data storage and the connections that we have. So in uh, telling the Newcastle uh, story, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the systems and the tools that we have and then talk about the three workflows that sort of make up those systems and tools and the connections and integrations uh, between those. So to tell the story, I'm just going to introduce you to the systems and the tools um, that are in this space at Newcastle. So for research data storage, um, we have own cloud. Uh, we have an enterprise uh, version of own cloud here. Uh, for data archiving and publishing, we're using a tool, uh, a software app that was created for to run on own cloud, and it's called Create It. Uh, for data management and registry for the data management and metadata curation workflows, we're using Redbox and Mint, similar to what um, Chris was just talking about. Uh, and for publisher discovery, uh, we're doing that via our institutional repository, which is Nova here at Newcastle. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about the, the workflow and how they all connect uh, and just describe that to you. And after I've done that, I've just got two... Uh, small videos, short videos that just actually just show you that uh, in action so you can uh, I'll tell you about it and then I'll actually show it to you. Uh, unlike Chris, um, I, I wasn't um, keen to do uh, a live demonstration because that would probably go wrong. So uh, I'm using it there. So for research, so the work, the very first, um, it, it, these are the three workplaces. So I'm just talking about the connections between uh, the two. So a research uh, data storage. So in that is our own cloud, uh, which is enterprise version, I think it's seven, that we're on at the moment, and that sits on, I think it's a petabyte. Uh, and on that we have this app, which is Credit. Credit was developed, uh, it's late in 2013, uh, we started work on Credit. It was born from work that um, Peter Septon was doing at University of Western Sydney, or Western Sydney University, I should say. Um, at the time, and it was a collaboration between University of Newcastle, uh, Western Sydney, uh, Intersect, who were doing the development, uh, and in those early days, University of Sydney as well. So, um, credit was about the problem that, that we had identified in the library about wanting to have this connection with the research data storage uh, to, uh, to hook into our data management uh, and publishing workflow uh, for Redbox and the Mint. So, and since Credit was developed, or the, the development started way back in um, 2013, there's been a few development cycles along the way. Um, so there's been a few sprints and agile developments to get it to where it is now. And also there's um, some future development coming, which I'll tell you about at the end. So in, our, in that workflow, that research data storage workflow, that's what's sitting there. Uh, in the data management publishing one, we have, similar to Chris, Redbox and the Mint. So the red box is our metadata, metadata stores um, descriptive uh, curation workflow, and it's hooked up to the Mint, which is our name authority service um, for our uh, uh, for our party records, our, our staff members, our researchers, um, and also for um, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> um, uh, our grants, sorry, that's what I was looking for, uh, information about our grants. And then uh, that's connected to um, NOVA, which is uh, for discovery. Sorry, I'll just, so just run through quickly. Uh, so in the um, research data storage workflow, that first one there, what um, researchers do there, uh, or users of it, they log into the own cloud um, environment that we have, they create a crate, crate is a, a data crate, um, they add files to that crate, and the files are the files that they, they're working files from there that they have on own cloud, so they add it to the crate. Uh, then they have the opportunity in Crate It to also add metadata, and from there they can review the metadata, and then they can publish the crate. When they publish the crate, it moves across. Uh, a couple of things happen. One of those is it comes to the library, into the next workflow, that data management and publishing and the researcher receives uh, an email with a lot of rich metadata in it. And then in the data management and publishing workflow, the one sitting in the middle there, that's where the library uh, works on uh, the metadata that's come across, the alert that's come across from Crater. So that alert arrives into that system. Uh, the library works on it, so we 
augment the metadata and we add metadata and we um, probably have more conversation with the, the researcher to actually uh, work on permissions and probably more on descriptions. And when we're happy with that, we publish a record and it goes across into LIMA um, for discovery up through Research Data Australia. So this is Vicky's highly sophisticated systematic diagram. Um, so um, what's, it's just a way of very simply demonstrating um, sort of what's happening. So we've got Own Cloud. Uh, the researchers are in there with their, it's their storage, their working files. I should say that Own Cloud is just one of the storage options we have at Newcastle. But if you want to have the connections to publish, um, Own Cloud is where um, we have the ability to do that in the capacity. So from the credit tool, uh, two things happen. When a researcher uh, uses credit and they publish uh, or submit a data crate, they press the button, which I'll show you shortly, uh, two things happen. So a metadata alert goes across to a red box system and it's like the butt of a record. So it's an alert that has information that's been collected while the researcher has been working in credit. Uh, the second thing that happens is that the data crate itself, so a zipped up file, and it uses the Bagot um, specification that came out of the California Digital Library. Um, that data set then actually, uh, data crate goes into our storage, uh, storage layer. Uh, so the metadata alert goes across and it's ingested into Redbox. So more work happens there uh, in Redbox to augment that. And then from Redbox, we send uh, a mark, a DC, and a RIF CS record uh, across to Nova. Embedded in that, from that metadata alert uh, information all the way through that process, travelling with it is the URL to the data crate in the storage um, layer. So uh, the institutional repository uh, has a priv interface uh, into the storage layer. So uh, it's able to be the gatekeeper uh, for the access to the data. So if it's publicly available, uh, it's only publicly available uh, to NOVA uh, through that priv uh, network access. So just quickly, um, this is a very uh, three minute video, um, of quickly just demonstrating what I've just told you in terms of own cloud and create it. So the researcher logs in, they see all their files in own cloud. Uh, they're able to toggle up and they'll see a little icon that's called crate it. They can, by default, they have a default crate for their data, but they can create a new one. So I'm going through the process of creating a new crate. So this is my study on green frogs. Uh, so it's collecting the metadata to go. Uh, and this is a description. Uh, on my crate. So then I fix my typo and I click to create and now I have a crate. It's just told me up the top there in yellow that I've got a new crate. Now I'm toggling and I'm going back to my files on OwnCloud and now I can add by right clicking um, the crates will let you add to the crate. So I'm just adding in my data dictionary, my um, population um, information on frogs, my environmental information, and I've got some images. But basically you pick and choose what it is as the researcher you want to package up that goes into that data crate. Um, and when you've finished, it's telling you as you go that it's adding things to the crate so you can actually see it. So we'll go back to Crate It and we shall see the files have gone into our crate. Now, over on the right-hand side, the researcher or the user has some ability to add some metadata uh, around those files that will go with that crate. And this ultimately is going across to start the, the butt of a record uh, for the library to augment to the publishing. So there's a few things here. So with crate information with the title, the creators, um, we're just adding them now. It's hooked up to our Mint system. So it's actually doing a look up against the Mint and it's bringing it back. It's hooked up to the Mint again and it's searching for grants. So we can select the grant and pull that information back in um, and so forth. So there's some more work going on around what actual metadata should be here, which I can tell you a little about. There's a feature to check the crate to make sure that all the items are valid and still there since you added them. If you want to hit the button to submit, you get to review all the metadata that you've entered. At this point, you can go back and change it. 
or you can hit the submit button and that submit button is then sending it through for the research data storage, the, the data create information to the library. So you can send an email uh, to additional people that you're working with to say that that's what's happened. So that's how um, Create It is running on OwnCloud. The researcher can also zip up the, uh, the data crate, uh, a copy for themselves and also um, save elsewhere if they want to. So the submit button has done two things. It set that, crate, that data crate or that data set to storage uh, for archival purposes and then it's actually sent it across to the library. Uh, so this is our red box instance which is not publicly available, it's a tool that the library uses so it's fairly as is and I'll just start the process to show you what happens here. So when you're logged into the system, the very first thing you see in the alerts is an alert that's Hunter Valley Green study, uh, study on green frogs. So that's arrived in the source next to it called owncloud crate So it's telling the library where it's come from storage um, and uh, it's arrived. So we start the process of looking at that record, um, we go into it and then we start working on it. And Chris showed you before there's various things you know, that the library works on. Um, so we can add lots of information there through a conversation with the researcher as well. So that's basically how it works. Um, this is just demonstrating that the information from the crate comes over and is populated as, as put in by the researcher into various sections uh, in this system. When we're finished, we hit the button to publish the record. So this is where we do it and the record is published across to our institutional repository um, and it just shows that it's actually been published. So finally, um, after the tip publish button, it arrives in Nova. So it has behind the scenes, it's uh, sending receives over as well and it's harvested from there. We harvest it up to uh, Research Data Australia. Um, so I guess the last thing I would say, so that's the process, so that's the three workflows and that's how they're connected from the Research Storage and Cloud through the Redbox Mint to the library, uh, through to uh, Discovery on the other end, uh, which is facilitated through Nova with that connection back into research data storage um, if it's applicable. So lastly, um, I would mention that um, uh, I've, I've said that uh, there's been a number of iterations um, with development on the Crate It tool uh, and Arnet are currently funding further development um, and enhancements to the tool uh, at the moment, um, which they'll be trialling with Cloud Store Plus. So if there's a group um, of us working on that. So Obviously Arnet, uh, Intercept are doing the development and also uh, University of Western Sydney and University of Newcastle because we've been working on this uh, for quite a while uh, now. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you, Vicky. If anybody has any questions for Vicky, can you put them in the... Uh... Oh, oh, this one here already. It says, once a project is complete and all creatable data is packaged and up, packaged up and published and archived, how do you ensure researchers go back and delete all remaining redundant data in own cloud? I have to actually, um, it would be a, pol a policy or a business rule within um, IT and I actually don't know the answer to what we actually do here. With, when you're selecting the files to add to a crate picky, what ha does it track where they are? Can, if a researcher moves them around, does that then become disconnected yeah. from the crate? Yeah, so it was fairly quick. So I did talk about, um, it was fairly quick on the screen, it flashed up, there was that one of the um, icons across the top uh, in the navigation and create it was a, a, a button that was check and the demonstration that I just did it, it validated. But what the purpose of that is, it's, it's like um, it's checking to see if the names have changed, if the files have been removed and, and it's, it's exactly that because it's referencing where those files are in, from the files actually in OpenAI. So it, I presume then the advice would be to sort of structure a, a location pretty much where you're going to have it and set it and not change with it too much. Yeah, but if you do, you just have to do a little bit more work when you're going to package it up. 